Hello guys, this is a 20 British pound note. It can buy me a couple of pints at a local pub or this, the entry level first gen Ryzen 3 CPU. Can you believe it has been 7 long years since the first gen was released? So today we are going to check if buying the cheapest Ryzen processor makes any sense. This budget-oriented Ryzen 3 1200 was introduced in July 2017 with an MSRP of 109 USD. Manufactured on 40 nanometer process, it comes with 4 cores and 4 threads, there is no simultaneous multi-threading. Those cores are running at 3.1GHz base clock and, under load, they will happily boost to 3.4GHz. Ryzen 3 1200 has a low TDP of just 65 watts and it fits into the AM4 socket. Memory support officially tops up at DDR4 speeds of 2666 and this CPU offers 16 PCIe Gen 3 lanes. Today's testing was done using an ASRock X570 Extreme 4 motherboard fitted with 32GB of Corsair's Vengeance memory, which, sadly, I couldn't get to work above the officially rated speeds. As always, H150i looks after the temps, and RTX 3080 ensures our little AMD CPU is the bottleneck. Before we start, it's worth mentioning that the total system power draw at idle was just 88 watts, jumping to 122 under full CPU load. And even though the CPU can technically be overclocked, I gave up, as mine could not even achieve stable 3.6GHz. Not to worry, let's benchmark. Cinebench R23 first. The single thread score of 886 is decent, considering that Ryzen 3 is pretty much the worst case scenario for the Zen 1 core running such low core frequency. Highlighting Zen 2 and Zen 3 architectures on the graph shows serious score improvements as the architecture matured. Intel's second gen i7 2700K managed to beat this Ryzen, however, only when running a hefty 5GHz overclock. With just 4 cores, 7 zips dictionary benchmark ranked the CPU slightly above 20 GIPS, which is not very impressive, but hey, when you look at the A12, it's not even that bad. Running Blender's car demo render took 12 minutes to complete, which was more or less comparable to an overclocked FX8350 or 1st Gen i7-870. And finally, I've used Handbrake to process a 10GB video file utilizing fast 1080p30 preset. This took 38 minutes to complete, clearly beating Bristol Ridge cores found in the A12. The lack of cores and low clock speed shows, but Let's not forget, this was the cheapest Ryzen there was. Game benchmark starts with F1 2018. Game didn't utilize cores to 100% and Ryzen 3 managed to squeeze just 99 FPS on average with 1% low set 58, making it slightly slower than an overclocked first gen i7 870 or the 8350. Third rally with ultra settings next. Strangely, CPU utilization dropped even further, and with 84 FPS on average, Ryzen 3 falls behind even more, this time by around 23% over the FX8350. At last, Deus Ex Mankind Divided comes to rescue and finally pushes all four cores to 100% during the benchmark run also causing the CPU temperatures to rise to 32C. Um, bad jokes aside, Ryzen managed 64 FPS on average, which was slightly slower than the first Gen i7. Next, Forza Horizon 4. I was happy to see all CPU cores flat out again, but with an average FPS of just 84, I'm starting to realize that this Ryzen 3 processor is simply not powerful enough to beat even the 8 years older Intel's first gen i7. And to add more salt into injury, I had to disqualify Ryzen from the next game tested, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This game benchmark includes three scenes and for some reason the last scene never loads, instead I get to observe black screen and a lovely sounding cricket for few minutes. 
and after a couple of times I simply gave up. Another great 100% utilization on CPU cores in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Sadly, no real change in performance, Ryzen 3 only pushed 157 FPS on average, making it dead last again. Oh no, actually, wait, there's still the A12, yeah. Far Cry 6 with Ultra settings next. Ryzen 3 managed 45 FPS on average, with 1% lows at 23, making it 17% slower than the i7-870, but about 40% faster over the dreaded A12. Last game tested was Cyberpunk 2077, which managed to push all cores to 100%, but, rather unsurprisingly, Ryzen 3 stays consistent and with under 50 FPS on average, it falls short of everything but the A12. Raiden, there you have it. Release of Zen Architecture was probably the best thing that happened to PC industry back in 2017, of course alongside with the release of 1080 Ti, and I'm glad it helped establish a long lifespan for the AM4 platform. Being the cheapest Zen 1 part, Ryzen 3 1200 was aimed at low power, budget builds, and we really need to keep this in mind when looking at results of today's testing. I still could not help it a little, and part of me perhaps expected to see it would at least beat some of the first gen i7s or the FX8350. At the same time, I do realize those were sold as high-end parts and they consume a lot more power. Despite the not very impressive gaming performance, I believe the true appeal of this chip is simply the amazing value for money and low power consumption. Here in the UK, CEX sells them dirt cheap, just £15, which is roughly 18 USD, and the abundance of cheap AM4 motherboards and DDR4 memory means you can build yourself a decent, power efficient, everyday use PC for very little money. I'm going to test the unlocked 6 and 8 core Zen 1 parts in near future, and I'm sure it's going to be interesting to see how they compare. Guys, hope you enjoyed this video, let me know what are your thoughts on this CPU, and did you ever own a Zen 1 chip? Don't forget to smash the like button, or go wild and hit that subscribe button. Either way, I hope to see you all in the next one.